Black revolutionaries, distillery owners, Italian fashion retailers, and Motown Grammy winners all share their best stories never before told in any other media outlets on Detroit Is Different. Visit DetroitIsDifferent.com or download the Detroit Is Different app on Apple's App Store or Google's Play Store. All right, welcome back to Detroit Is Different, the podcast. And we're keeping everything rolling. We're keeping things fresh. We're keeping things new. And more so as we embrace summer, the season change, the harvest, so much is happening. And what's happening is definitely us making sure we empowered and in our best quality of life. Uh, my guest today is definitely adding to that. And also a fellow Northwestern cult. And if you are a cult, just know that this Saturday is the all alumni picnic on Northwestern grounds. It's the first time we've done it since the COVID-19 pandemic. So come on out. It's also a... Uh, the, the continued legacy of Soul Day led by Keith Williams. Uh, and if you know my neighborhood, Northwestern, if you're a cult, you should know about Soul Day and what that represents. We honor a Pee Wee in the best ways that we possibly can. Right there on the grounds, you know where Northwestern is, 2200 West Grand Boulevard, you know, for all the cults. But uh, this cult that I have today is someone that I didn't know. It was someone introduced from the East Sider, but the East Sider we love, GMAC, Greg McKenzie. Uh, our key line, Molly Wife, he reached out to me and said, hey, man, you, you know, a sister, uh, Deshonda, she got a vitamin store. It's like right in the footprint. She's from like around. She went to Northwestern. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't. So the way that I was introduced, now you're going to be introduced. Deshonda Edwards, how are you doing I'm today? doing good. Thank you so much for having me. You all right? Definitely. Everything is well. Everything good. is well. So uh, we can kick this thing off the usual Detroit is different style, more so your Detroit story and just kind of the background that led you and your peoples here. So mm -hmm. first off, uh, are you a first generation, second generation Detroiter? Like, was your family here already when you were born? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. So with that being said, how deep, like, when did your family make its way to Detroit? Um, from my grandmother. My grandmother uh, moved from San Francisco, California with my mom and her siblings, and they transitioned to uh, the metro Detroit area, specifically inner city Detroit. Okay. Um, grew up uh, on the west side of Detroit. Okay. Um, many places on, on west side that I've, I've uh, got, become accustomed to. Okay. So uh, in that same footprint, just a natural question, what you know because that bay area and i really think oakland more than san francisco mm -hmm. but if you're black and you're in san francisco and your uh average quality means like <laughs> that means you're kind of from oakland you know what i'm saying and it's like i already see david e somewhere and then we're all watching this interview like, basically ah. yeah <laughs> so what led them from that from out west to detroit you know what? I'm not really um, familiar with the actual story. Mm -hmm. um, I just know um, from my grandmother um, mm -hmm. and my mom, um, they moved here. I'm not sure what led them here. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a job, um, personal reasons. Um, unfortunately, I don't know. Maybe that would be, you know, a room for me to learn more about my family history. Maybe I should go a little bit, you know, deep diving and try to figure it out because it, it can be very interesting. Okay, you know. so, so... Thanks for bringing that up. I don't let, know. Yeah. <laughs> let's go into the Detroit story mm -hmm. of uh, when they moved here. Where, what neighborhood? Whereabouts? Um, so, um, for what I can remember um, from the stories that I've been told uh, from my mom, they moved um, on... Well, I know my grandma lived on Sussex. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, my mother grew up on Pingree and Blaine area. Oh, um, yep. Yeah. E-Town. E-Town. <laughs> Pingree, Philadelphia, Northwestern kids know about it. Yeah, you know we do. They'd be like, oh, man, the P-Town boys. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Know, they say that about any street. It's like, <laughs> F-A's, P-A's. Like, Pierce and Ab, right. You're anywhere. They'd be like, oh, man, them people from that one block. That's, <laughs> you know? Stay away. No, I'm just yeah, like, like, don't mess with them. The number <laughs> street. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um... What was your what what was your mom embracing? Like what was uh what what was her flow? Uh, well, my mom was real artsy. Um, again, from what I can remember, um, unfortunately, my mother passed away when I was relatively young. Condolences. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when she passed on, I, think I was like 12, you know, mm -hmm. so I still remember her vividly. Um, mm -hmm. But I was still a child, so I'm not really sure. But I do know she was really uh, talented um, art-wise. I, I do remember, you know, finding some sketches of her doing, like, you know, um, 
uh, interior design and designing clothes and stuff like that. So I know she was very artsy. Um, she did read a lot also and, and loved music. So okay. I think that passed on to me, okay. uh, you know. And then um, from there, I transitioned, you know, when my mom passed away, I went with my grandma. Okay. Um, and, you know, from there we moved, um, you know, more and more east, uh, west, west. I'm all west side. So okay. I grew up you on. You never lived on the other side of I, I have no, I have no idea what the other side. No, People like, like, the west side is the best side and the east side is the best side. Well, I only know west. So, you uh, know, it's the best side to be. Like, uh, you haven't been like <laughs> next door to northern, like a stone you know, people, from the east side. <laughs> people like, like, yeah, you, you, you know what northern like that? Half, <laughs> you have east side. <laughs> no, no. So uh, people, when people be like, you know, yeah, you know, we're north this and that, and I be like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I be faking it for you. They're like, oh yeah, right there. Oh okay. And I be like, uh, I, I don't know. If somebody say, <laughs> if somebody say, all right, you, yeah, you just got to You know where the gas station at on Shane? What what ice cream place? You like, uh, you might as well be saying. Uh, <laughs> so I say in yeah. Beirut. I say yeah, then I go maps. Uh, uh, <laughs> pre, pre Google Maps, you would have just been. Oh, no, no, I'm out of there. It's going to be as my West Side bias for you guys. It's like yeah. the classic. I'm sure West Siders do, do, do this too. It's like, uh, it was a Kool Aid joke. Another fellow Northwestern. It's like, East Siders always give you directions with landmarks. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, what? It's like, okay, pass four gas stations, and then it's a red house. Like, like not a red, red house, but a red house. Make a left. And it's like, what are you talking talking about <laughs> give me some street names yeah, if man you're, if you're young this is you know if you're young you have no idea what life was like pre-gps to get to the right party but mm -mm. it was you know you'd be like i think this is this is off and then sometimes <laughs> in, the, in a detroit gas station asking for uh for directions they're right. like what are you talking about where are you, going? <laughs> you can't do that today they're like where your phone at you yeah, know exactly so so with that um your 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 grandma. What did uh -huh. your grandma do? What was her name? Well, um, my grandma. She was real jazzy and snazzy. Um, but she worked at um, Henry Ford Hospital for uh, twenty five years. She retired Whoa. from there. Whoa. Yeah. So you know, I'm very familiar with you know uh, catching the bus from Northwestern and going you know up to the hospital. You know, check out my grandma. You know, then ride home with her from work. Um, but we lived. I'm trying to remember all the street names we lived on, um, but she was from Fullerton. Okay. She lived on Fullerton, so you know I lived on Fullerton for a short period of time um, in Davidson, okay. and um, and then when I transitioned with her, we moved to Drury Road in Greenfield. Okay, west, west, a whole more nother, west. A whole nother, it's like, that's, that's like from like the. Fullerton and Davidson, that's like over here. <laughs> yes, right here. Yeah. To, you said like uh Joy Road and, and you said Greenfield. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the that's the Cody neighborhood. Yeah. A so, whole nother feel. Right. So I ain't gonna Cody. I went I caught the bus from there to Northwestern. Okay. Yeah. So I caught the bus there. Uh -huh. Um and then uh we live on um Appaline. Um, Finkel Myers. Okay. Um, okay. So you know, like you know where that Little Caesars at on Myers? Mm -hmm. Like that was that was my spot right there. Yeah. So it's like almost like that's that's what I would consider more the uh, Mumford neighborhoods. Right? Really? But or it could be Cooley. I mean, that's one of them split type neighborhood yep. issues. Yeah. And you I know? caught the bus. Uh, <laughs> now, so I caught the bus from Joy Road in Greenfield to Weber, mm. and then. From um, from Appalon, I caught the bus to Northwestern. So you're yeah. a kid that went from Weber to Northwestern. Okay, yeah. so you had to. Not, so all your friends. Yeah, I had to keep it. Kept, kept rolling with you. <laughs> like, come on, Grandma, you got to move closer to the school because I I got to go to Northwestern where all okay. my friends is going. You know. So, so. so let's just go into to that story. What was Northwestern like for you and Weber? Because I mean, now when we look at Weber, I mean, you know. It's, it's the training facility for police right. officers. But what was um, what was that transition? Uh, what was that like? I was. It was dope to me. You know, being a kid. I mean, it was not that long ago. Uh, <laughs> but it was dope. You know, we got to we got you know I got to hang out with my friends. You know, we was bad. You know, we was a bad. We wasn't bad, but we we did our own thing. You know, we did our own thing. Um, and actually, we, um, 
for the most part, we all still keep in touch. For okay. whether it's Facebook, you know, social media has saved a lot. You know, mm -hmm. people talk negatively about it, but um, like people so negative and all of that. I'm like, well, who are your friends on there? You know, mm -hmm. you need to change your 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 friendship environment on there because it could be very positive. Um, but. I still keep in contact with a lot of friends from Weber and Northwestern. Okay. Like it's it's just dope. I'm surprised you know? most of the Weber people didn't go to NO, but yeah. um they went to a lot of people, a lot of um kids from Weber did go, but then they went to like Murray Wright, mm -hmm. um McKenzie. McKenzie right. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep. So but you know, even still, um even if they transitioned to other schools, we still was friends from Weber. Like till today, you okay. know. Yeah. So uh, Northwestern uh, after Northwestern, where whereabouts uh, after high school? Where, after where high was school, I went to <laughs> I went to a, a university called Northwood, okay. Northwood University up Northwood. in Midland. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very familiar with Northwood because uh, they they uh, Mr. D what's that Dunlap? Really? Mr. Dunlap had us on that trip, and it was just like yeah, I mean we can miss a day of school, but. Strong business school. What mm -hmm. was Northwood like for you? Um, it was uh, it was cool. You know, I met a lot of great people there. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of great friends. Um, the the journey was, you know, what you made it. You know, when I first when we first went. Um, I went. I went to Northwood, uh, Northwood with some of my Northwood or Northwestern friends. Excuse me, and um, you know, we made it happen. Okay. You know, um, I think when we first went, um, that might have been like the most black people they seen there, you know, in a very long time. Like five. What are you? It's a whole constituency. <laughs> it's five, it's the five black. I'm just messing with you. Know, but, you know, like, no, that's my school though. That's my know, alma mater. So yeah. it, it's it, it was great to me. You know, um, I went there for four years, and then I went to the Richard DeVos School of Management. Um, post there, so um, I graduated uh, with a few degrees and um, went to to the workforce, and then I went back to school. Okay, so uh, I know I did a leap. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, no, 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 no. I'm getting into it. You know, I'm unpacking. I feel like this is like one of the Indeed commercials. So like, wow, you know, fine talent. <laughs> you know, in the workforce, but um, more so. Uh, what what were your majors uh, um, at Northwood? What did you like? What did you find yourself attracted to there? Um, advertising, marketing, and business management. Okay. Um, what so. what attracted you to those disciplines? Well, um, in high school, um, in high school, I was in a competition. I forget it was a program where you went to go speak in front of people, and you had to make a speech. And I made a speech about advertising. It was just something random I picked, you know, and I had to do all this research about advertising and marketing so I could get up in front of a group of strangers and present why marketing and advertising was important. And from that research, I was like, hmm, this might be really interesting, you know. So from that little blip, I was like, okay, I want to make marketing and advertising my career. Then um, that's what I went to Northwood for, but then when you went when I went there and got exposed to more, my interest changed. Um, I still loved marketing and advertising, so I have a dual degree in that. Um, but um, business management and doing the, knowing the intricacies of running a business and. Uh, the operations of a successful business really, really intrigued me. And so I said, well, hmm, maybe I need to transition from this to that. Um, and they mesh well together anyway. So I'm not really wasting my time doing both. Okay. You know what I mean? So, um, so it was really, really great learning experience because um, being from the inner city, you don't really know what you're capable of. You know, it's my first time away from home, you know. Um, 
and you, when you in school and you 200 plus miles away, I don't know how many miles really it is, but two and a half hours away from home. It's home. like, um, <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's like near Frankenmuth and, and uh, it's like, like up that way. Yes, yeah, it's up like Bay City. Um, where was it? Mount Pleasant was not too far away. Um, but you two and a half hours away from your comfort zone. Like you can't call mommy and daddy or grandma for help right away. You know, you got to figure it out. Um, so it was a learning experience. You had to really figure out what you was really made of, you know. Um, you which, get a, which to that question, I, I do have uh, being black at, okay, being black in America <laughs> is a journey. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, being black at a predominantly white institution, mm -hmm. as we're hearing more information, you know, it, it, it can come with some some challenges. Some mm -hmm. of it, um, I think, are, are just some of the misunderstandings culturally. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it can be designed like it could be like you know, no, nah, this is like strategically something mm -hmm. that is oppressive. But sometimes I think it's just the misunderstanding, which mm -hmm. you can make the argument that that's oppressive itself as mm -hmm. well. But uh, Northwood is a, a smaller business school, like away from even like other urban environments. Mm -hmm. So to leave a city, to leave Detroit, because even the other people from Michigan sometimes like you from Detroit, like mm -hmm. you from Jackson and Muskegon <laughs> and stuff. It's like wow, you mm -hmm. making it seem like you know what I mean? I'm from <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You know, so what was that like? It, making that adjustment and then what would you say to like a young a younger student that's about to make that journey just mm -hmm. for that adjustment at a school mm -hmm. like that well i mean i don't know if i went in with blinders on and maybe i had a comfort level because i was with my friends um but i won't say it was an easy transition but it was an easy transition you yeah. know it wasn't um from what i could recall and what I felt, I didn't feel like anybody made me feel uncomfortable being there. Okay. Um, you know, people can be douchebags or whatever everywhere, you know. Um, but um, I don't feel like I had to, um, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know the words to say, but like overcome like something like some, um, I'm not sure how to say it, but I felt comfortable. And, and um, I was just more so saying like, maybe not even the people, but uh -huh. just the environment itself. Like, oh, it was very different. You know, um, like what were those adjustments? What words would you say? I mean, as, as well, it was actually, start, you know, again, being going in with blinders on, you know, we really don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one shock was um, that around the time we went grocery shopping, you didn't really see a lot of bl other black people. And mm -hmm. then when you did, it was like the Superman, like oh, the, like mm -hmm. <laughs> the Spider Man. I'm sorry, Spider Man. Like oh, it's you, you know, um, like oh, you see another black person that's not you know, of the university. So, um, and then even something like as simple as go groceries, it's like. Some of the groceries you're used to when it's messed up, and we're gonna definitely get into that. Yes. <laughs> like the black community, we're used to it. Like, where is Frank's? <laughs> the hot sauce, then, like, like you know, the hot sauce. It's like, oh, it's Basco you right know? there. Like, oh, eat uh, this. oh, we made it work. You know, we couldn't have. We had to, you know. <laughs> We got in trouble for having like a little deep fryer and said, like, what are we supposed to eat? You know, we can't eat this in the cafeteria. We don't want that. But, <laughs> no, <laughs> I guess, but you know, it's some like other people's food, you know. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I never even, it's like experimentation. You're like, like, I don't want that. Your stomach be hurting for no reason. <laughs> like, exactly. like, but, you know. Like the, the Danish? Like, right, exactly. Like, I don't know what that is. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> give me a donut. <laughs> 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 Give me a, a Dutch girl donut or something. Mm -hmm. But um, the experience was great, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think that ago. that, uh, it, so, so from there, and, and, you, and you carried on in your, uh, in your academic journey mm -hmm. um, and, and keeping that going. But you also said you mentioned that you, you tapped in and, and working in that field. What, mm -hmm. From Northwood, what, where did you tap in? Uh, so, um, I, before I went to the DeVos School of Management, I went into the workforce. So I worked at um, 
ACO Hardware. I was a store manager. Mm. Um, I did mostly store management, ACO did, Hardware. Did you apply some of what you learned? And, oh, absolutely. Okay, and then what's mm -hmm. the and then for this as this this is always as a business person, you know, management skills. I, I'm I'm still on that learning curve when it comes mm -hmm. to that, but. Um, I do know that, yes, I, I've had a wealth of business classes, mm -hmm. but the, mal the management challenges that I've seen in real work are mm -hmm. nothing like the textbook had. Really? How did you mm -hmm. address and how did you learn your management flow and just really building a rapport with, with employees? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, with the job you said, you had probably the other big hurdle. You were you probably were managing people older than you, which mm -hmm. is always a, you know, that that's a dynamic if mm -hmm. you haven't been in that situation. Cause you know, I, I remember I walked in a situation like that one time and it was like a guy that was maybe like 50 and I'm like 26. <laughs> and and, and my, our first meeting like, I ain't about to listen to him, right. I quit. And I'm like, damn. Oh, why? <laughs> damn. Like, Yo, give me a chance, man. Like, hold on, come back. Some stuff. Like, so I had to, so mm -hmm. I had to learn mm -hmm. a flow in it. How did you like build your own management flow? Cause I think the best managers are that people that mm -hmm. like have a comfort, have a flow and really can in life. That's so personal, like refocus people like, look, dude, I'm focused on the work, but it takes a manager to be, to have that skill set. Mm -hmm. So for beginning, you, you got to experiment, experiment. So, you know, first you want to go in like, you know, with your chest, like, I, you know, like, I'm the boss, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody know that don't, that don't work, mm -hmm. you know, um, it don't work most of the time. I've never seen it work. <laughs> um, so you really got to figure, you figure it out on the, on the go, mm -hmm. you know, are you going to be, um, authoritative, you know, do this, um, do, like this this and this because i said so or you know are you going to have a more open approach um but the most success that i've had is um when you get to learn your employees um and, and i want to unpack that a little bit mm -hmm. because it, it's also i think more in our tradition in our culture as black folks to be more familiar mm -hmm business world which is not you know business world how we've been trained from a western science because i'm a wash guy mm -hmm. small business school mm -hmm. so like teaches that that's not you know the whole you know family and business don't mix mm -hmm. you know, don't get too close and everything mm -hmm. how do you manage to keep the uh here's the term uh my father always uses the dynamics of the relationship still focused on being productive while kind of having a a, a well, not kind of building a personal relationship mm -hmm. with people because sometimes you know you you're the manager and you get invited to the employee's birthday and then you show up at the birthday and it's like oh man you know i was you know i was going last night so mm -hmm. you know i'm probably coming in late tomorrow and it's like mm -hmm. what you mean mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like what you mean coming in late like how do you manage to build that personal bond mm -hmm. while still you know, making sure that things are productive in the, in right. the workflow. So when you learn your employees, your employees also learn you, right? And so they know, they begin to know what you would tolerate and what's not going to hold mm -hmm. with that particular manager or person in charge. Like, um, and it's also about listening. Like, I did a lot of listening to my employees, Um and then you have to build the rapport. You have to, you know, you have to get to know them intimately. You know, it, we're not going to be best friends, but I need to know what kind of music you like. Me, Deshonda, needs to know what kind of music you like because I like music. So maybe that could be, you know, a way that we could, you know, kind of break the ice a little bit. Um, you know, oh, you like Jay-Z? Well, you know, I do too. Oh, you like such and such? Well, I do too. Um, and then you kind of just build from there. You just let it come naturally, but you still um, have to be professional and you still have to let them know that there's duties that need to be done and, and tasks. And, you know, it's about how you communicate with them too. 
you know. Um, you know, I'm a pretty easy going person, but I still have to make sure stuff is done. So, so in this in this world of uh, being a young manager, mm -hmm. uh, fresh out of school, like as you are, you know, um, as you are, I don't want to say responsible, but you definitely serve in a capacity of um, of influence to. To, to to some adults mm -hmm. you know what what uh what were you doing to stay to stay grounded to to keep focused and not let that you know be too overbearing on you as mm -hmm. a young manager in that capacity um just knowing there's a difference there's a difference like i'm at work so when i'm at work i'm at work and then there's a cutoff so um even with me having my own business there is a cutoff you know, you can't be consumed um, with work, you know. Um, go ahead. And, and, and with that, I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm praying as much as this is an open discussion. It's an open discussion that I'm having and I'm learning from you. But I'm also like, you know, I speak on behalf of generalizations in society mm -hmm. oftentimes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that whole work-life balance mm -hmm. is... is is spoken about mm -hmm. but then when you connect with other entrepreneurs in american in america the lifestyle of what is the propaganda of the lifestyle of an entrepreneur is always working hard like i remember you know it's like you know puffy saying one time it's like i wish i didn't even have to sleep because mm -hmm. that's how much i gotta grind mm -hmm. and it's and you know that's just puffy saying that but that whole ideology of like multiple projects you know mm -hmm. uh, a couple years back i watched that kevin hart documentary and it's like wow this dude wakes up at five o'clock in the morning trains with his trainer uh for for like an hour and a half and then after that hour and a half he showers and then after like basically kevin hart's day mm -hmm. seemed like it started at five o'clock in the morning and it was scheduled all the way through till like one o'clock at night mm -hmm. almost so it's like damn you on like four hours of sleep maybe mm -hmm. a nap here or there like mm -hmm. And every conversation is like curated, like mm -hmm. timetable, like that level of grind. Mm -hmm. it obviously, can't necessarily give the 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 place and space to to be present to almost be human sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn it though. So mm -hmm. when I first started. Um, my business it was 24 7 mm. right you know day it was weeks i didn't i slept two hours and you're like wait a minute that's not healthy mm. you know how i'm teaching health and i'm not healthy you're like wait a minute that doesn't even make sense but you so focused on your goal you yeah. know like and then you hear the interviews with puffy yeah. and then you hear the interviews with kevin, who met hart, kevin hart jay-z oh, everybody yeah, you Gordon know yeah. all of that you know how i'm gonna find multiple streams of income but i gotta be woke to do that you know i i can't sleep you know so um and then someone said you you your business 24 7. i said you know i'm deshonda and my business is my business uh, yeah, in the beginning, but you got to transition. So if you talk to, I'm, in, I'm nowhere near, near the, you know, the, the celebrities, but if you talk to them today, I'm sure that's, that's probably changed because they don't have to do that no more. The grind is not the same, you know. And, and, know. and I'm, I'm speaking this because, you know, a lot of times. And people going to disagree with me, but, you know, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm more so saying I'm speaking this because I also have, um, I have homies. Mm -hmm. I, I call friends homies, yeah. just acquaintances or people I know, homies, but not American. Mm -hmm. And it's this ideology of this American work ethic. You know, it's like, you know, we'll say, oh, Europeans have like six weeks vacation every mm -hmm. year. How are they doing stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, or like, you know, some, some cultures, it'll be like a three hour lunch and then they'll come back maybe, you know. And it's like, damn, a three-hour lunch. You know what I'm saying? Then and I might be more work. productive. And it could be. It still may be your manager. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing. I think we're still probably covering the same productivity. Mm -hmm. I think in the quote-unquote 40-hour work week, 
the average American is probably giving like about 12 hours of real productivity. <laughs> and then the rest of those hours, they just like, you know, it's like, uh, it's like 28 hours are like, let me look like I'm doing something. Right. You know what Busy I'm work, you know. Yeah, yeah, let yeah. me make sure I'm following the newspapers real quick, you know. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, um, sending an email that, hey, I'm about to send a real email tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, exactly. here's something today, you know. But um, again, um, so. I graduated in what, 19, well, 2003, 2004, mm-hmm. college. And so from college, I went to work. Um, and in 2013, I started my own business. I dabbled in some other stuff. But um, this is what I really focused on. And from 2013 to very recently, it was 24 hours seven days a week um but you have to learn like i want to go to the movies i want to go out to eat with my friends i want to build a a relationship with you know such and such you can't do that if you 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 work in it's not healthy mentally it's not healthy um and it's sad we got to think like that because we trying to get the american dream right uh we trying to we trying to live the american dream and um, it's, you got to work, you know? Mm-hmm. If you ain't working, what you doing? You lazy. You, yep. you ain't got it, you lazy then, you know? So it's like, well, no, I just want to go to sleep for a little bit. <laughs> you know, I need a nap, you know? I want to have fun. So in, in management, mm-hmm. because that's the other thing, too. It's like I think the for at least me, and I'm assuming for others, as we ascend in our journeys of life and end up reaching levels professionally that it's like, wow, this is a good, you know, this is a good space. Mm -hmm. I'll put more pressure. Like now I have to operate at like a higher clip, Mm -hmm. you know? So you're, uh, it's like carrying that, you know? So like in that same flow to be, have the presence of mind that like sometimes I may need to not, like, I, I need to, to mix this. And that's why, like I say, I know for me, you know, a, a classic, as I say, overthinker. Um, <laughs> we got something in the common. The management is taking on an understanding of the team, mm-hmm. themselves, and the work. To effectively deliver the work, you need a healthy team. Mm-hmm. And to walk in with the full presence of mind about the work. Right. To have that presence of mind in a society where America really does push, in my mind, just the, the banner. We don't mm-hmm. know it, whether it's real or perceived. The, the American ethic is work hard, play hard. And when you work hard, you will get what you need so mm-hmm. you can play harder. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like, tsh, tsh, always grinding. Right. And then in management, I also learned, you know, when you build the right team, I can have the right team, but you also have to delegate it pr- properly, delegate the work. You might be great at something um, that I'm not good at. Mm-hmm. But if I give a job to somebody like me who's not good at, I'm not delegating properly anyway so i can have a perfect team but me as a manager if i'm not seeing what you're good at and that's learned through um observation communication listening um to your team um to my team um and then from there i would be able to properly delegate which then in turn should take less um work for me take pressure off of me you know if i'm pushing the work or delegating the work properly you know and still encouraging my team and still you know having a relationship with my team and sometimes there is a disconnect with management whether it's you know upper you know um with their employees um and then their employees begin to hate working there hmm. you know i hate this job i think it's a lot of <laughs> i mean I, I mean clearly monday if, if people don't know this is being recorded sunday mondays if, if we probably saw the culmination of social media posts like mm-hmm. that or if we saw 
how many Monday nights, if we follow like the, the Indeed uh, mm -hmm. job application monster, I bet you more applications are sent in on Mondays than anything. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a lot of Americans that do feel like they hate their job. Mm -hmm. uh, how, did, I didn't even think we'd be driving down this road. Why do you think so <laughs> many people are, are, are in these positions mm -hmm. from a management lens? What can a manager do if you have a, 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 a non-motivated, a, mm. a, an employee that just is feeling like, you know, I don't know where my place, uh, uh, dissociative behavior, like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know where my place is. I'm not even feeling my footing here. Like, mm -hmm. what is going on? Well, that's something more, um, so something that that individual probably needs to tackle. Okay. Um, but as a manager, I should have the confidence in that relationship with that individual and say, hey, you know, are you happy here? Maybe this isn't the place for you. Yeah, a long time ago. Um, but and I was younger today, I might feel more comfortable, you know, having that discussion mm -hmm. because if you're not being productive here, you're not doing, you're not beneficial to the company and you definitely is robbing yourself of your own happiness. Why do you want to do that? Um, so that's something that that individual probably needs to look inward. You know, I can't give you the answers, you know. Um, and sometimes people look for other people to give them the answers too. Like, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Let's sit down and talk about it, you know, and maybe we can come up with um, something together. Tell me what your likes are. Tell me what your dislikes are. Um, you know, and most of the time that's definitely not being discussed because we have as a manager, I have to answer to somebody and I have to, you know, have my goals met. Um, and so I don't think it's even intentional. Um, because my job is on the line too, you know, if you don't perform, they're going to say, why are your team not performing? What are you not doing, Deshonda? I'm telling them everything. I don't know, you know, so somewhere I'm failing. Um, and then you see turnover. Um, but a lot of people um like you said if you look on social media like i can't wait to get off of work i can't as soon as you clock in you ready to go um as soon as you get in the parking lot you ready to go you know as soon as you get in your car I've, I've, I've been that guy so it's like looking at the clock like, like oh my like, god you, you walk in at 10 and then it's like you do like a thousand things and then it's 10 15 like, like, like oh, oh my god like oh. you walk in the door you turn oh. right back around like i ain't gonna be able to do this you know exactly. so that's a you know that's um Motiv that's a motivator. Like most people are motivated by money, and a lot of people hate their job because they ain't making enough money. You know. Um. And, and, I, <laughs> and I guess you know. And I guess somebody would say like you know, pot. You know what I'm saying? Those in glass homes. But I, I would say, I don't know. Like I, I don't necessarily know that arc. I mean, I have my mm -hmm. own thought process about this because, mm -hmm. especially with our people. Because I've, I've been the person where I've met people at what I think is a, where I pay over and beyond what they've requested mm -hmm. um, in a contractual capacity. So they'll say like, yeah, 300. And I'll be like, look, because I really want your focus and everything. I'm going to go on and pay you 450. So mm -hmm. let me go on and give you 225 now and then 225 later. And I'm and in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, the money will motivate a different type of productivity. Mm -hmm. Usually, I found that usually not because mm -hmm. usually the arc of whatever it's like it's not even the money as much as it's the material possession that this person is looking to buy. Mm -hmm. So then when they acquire whatever that material possession is, it could be, you know, I don't know, Cartier's, mm -hmm. a new car, a Gucci belt, mm -hmm. I, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, when the diminishing return of that material item does not fulfill whatever that dissociative behavior was associated with <laughs> now i almost get a less productive employee because mm -hmm. now it's like damn i thought the buffs would have 
made her, mm-hmm. you know, I thought I'd put on the buffs, and then the girl just walked to me like, let me, here go my phone number, call me. And when she didn't do that, now I feel like these buffs is worthless too. Mm-hmm. I just need to go on and leave Detroit all together. You know, Detroit people is backwards, and, and then it's like you get a whole <laughs> different, like, energy, and it's like, well, you thought this material, um, you thought this money would bring about a different quality of life mm-hmm. that I think money has a very... Mm-hmm. And like I say, and I'm definitely, when I say glass homes, I ain't got a lot of money. <laughs> I've had a couple dollars here uh-huh. and there, but money has a very fast diminishing return. Right. And if, the thing, if you're looking for it to fulfill something right. that is not internal. Right. But we always want more, right? So, um, <clears throat> so you give them the 450 and they might be cool for a little bit, yeah. but I want more. Yeah. So that's just. I don't know if it's human nature, but, you know, um, even when you have a good piece of cake, you know, get your slice. I want more. You know, if it's good, it satisfied me. I, I'm even full. But mm-hmm. now I'm finna stuff myself because it was so good. I want more of it. You know, we always want, we never satisfied. And I you think know? that's a part of a, another, <laughs> I think that's actually, as much as I'm not as anti-capitalism as some of my liberal friends, <laughs> that is connected to capitalism. The idea of greed mm-hmm. and scarcity because mm-hmm. it's incepted scarcity inside of American capitalism. Mm-hmm. So so with incepted scarcity is like, or with manufactured scarcity, that means I want to grab and hoard as much as I possibly can because the idea is this will be scarce soon. Mm -hmm. So let me go on and, you know, right. We just get as much of everything as I possibly can, you know. Right. And that that brings to to your business, which Mm -hmm. addresses a lot of things. It's vitamin health, um, you know. Project Enhanced Fitness. Mm-hmm. Project Enhanced Fitness. Project Enhanced Fitness dot com. You can go to the website. What led you to this business? What was the connection? What was the what was the launch to say, I want to do this? Were you sitting mm-hmm. at home one day? It's like now it's not like the commercial. You were sitting yeah. at home watching um You ain't gonna do nothing in yeah, f- right? Fitness commercial. It's like, oh Billy Dunn fighting. I can add I can get in this game. Like what what was right. it? So um in college I used to uh you know, work out quite a bit and um and it carried you know i used to love going to the gym you know me and my uh my really really good friend uh my bro derek uh would go to gnc like we had a a date we went saturday we went we hitting up gnc you know we getting our vitamins we getting our supplements and um, we finna, you know, go on our way. I'm going to the gym. You do whatever. But that was our thing. We going to GNC, get our vitamins um, and our other type of supplements. <clears throat> um, and one day, like you said, I was laying down on the couch, you know, like, huh, you know. And I was uh, in my job for... A long time and <laughs> and i'm like is this what you want to do with your life like you know what you want to do with your life you know and uh you know i have a, a, a aha moment you know what do you like to do and they always said if you do what you love is not work you know uh what do you like to do mm, i like to go to the gym you know i like to go shopping for supplements it's crazy as that sound but you know Uh, What do you like to do? And then I said, you know, um, from being from the west side of Detroit and tapping into all of the communities that I lived in, I never seen anything where I can get healthy, you know? Mm. And I said, I care about my health. And I'm sure there's other people who look like me who care about their health, too. Mm. And I got to drive such and such such and such to get my vitamins and why is that you know um i'm like and derek he lived downtown in the near the art district and he like you know we we care about our health too you know we care about our health so you know and if you again if you do what you like it's not work so So the catalyst was the passion yeah 
So how do you go about getting into that industry? Were you, um, did you say, all right, I want to create my own supplement? Did you say, I want to be, I, I want to broker other, so, you know, buy supplements and help curate the, the supplement buy Because that's the other thing I think mm -hmm. with that business. It's also, you know, the working at GNC is not like working at, you know, Dollar General. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You You have to... You know, people are coming in there asking for, you know, hey, I want this. If I this, to get this, if to I take, get this result, you know, yeah. yeah. So, what what was the what was the your your entry point into that? Oh, a lot of research. Okay. Um, a, a, a lot, a lot of research. Um, you know, do do I want to have a gym and a vitamin spot for the gym, or do I just want to have uh, the vitamins and the supplements? And so it was like, you know, a lot of brainstorming, uh, researching the industry. Um, is it room for one more store like me? You know, um, you applied a lot of that college, you know, course. absolutely. You know, okay. <laughs> um, so um, I just I, did, I never wanted to have like, let me not lie, because I did, I did look into like, what if I made my own supplement brand? Mm -hmm. um, my own vitamin pack. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of money into that. So I said, okay, well, let me just sell somebody else's who's already established. You know, uh, I'll find me a distributor. Um, I started off um, fully online um, at projectenhancefitness.com and I did drop shipping. Hmm. Um, and again, I, did, I started in 2013. Mm -hmm. So I started off online only i did vendor shows um special events um marathon the detroit free press marathon mm -hmm. a few times and just set up a table like this and have my products on the table um and then from there i was able to transition into a location now again <clears throat> In deciding where I wanted to be, I wanted to uh, focus on uh, people who look like me. Um, because again, we care about our health also. Um, and why do I have to go out of where I live um, to get what I need? Um, so again, I grew up on um, Petoskey. I think I, I left out when I left Petoskey out. Um, I'm pure Cinematoski, and I went to Custer. Well, it was called Custer, then when I was called Thurgood Marshall. And uh, from all the places that I lived, we, I would always still be in this neighborhood. Um, and so I, you know, I did a lot of research again and drove around and, and sat in places and sat in parking lots just to see, you know, the atmosphere because that's important. Um, um, and I was able to pick my location um, and, uh, you know, open up uh -huh. and educate people on being proactive about your health because a lot of times we are mostly reactive um, I got this problem so what I need to help fix it where we should be um, I don't want this problem so what do I you know need to get to help me you know maintain good health and maintain proper health um, you know eating properly is key um, being hydrated, drinking water um, is also key. So, um, you know, and I think it's important for us to know that you don't always have to go to a fast food restaurant to get your food, you know. Um, it's less expensive to go to the grocery store and cook your food. Um, however, I do know, and I am realistic in knowing that we have to work you know um and most of us have more than one job and it's about and i try to tell my customers okay it's about uh preparing you know you can meal prep um you can cook a big dinner on sunday and put it in tupperware and have it for your lunch um you know buy some fruit you know wash it freeze it uh, make a smoothie for your breakfast um 
bag of, bags of fruit is expensive. You can buy fresh fruit, wash it, put it in Ziploc bags, and freeze it and be on the go. Um, and it's about taking the time to care about your health, too, you know. Uh, we need to kind of circle back around and and get back to that because we'd be so fast paced and so on the go um, where we don't have time. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. Like, I, I think that at my like uh, healthiest as far as like weight and everything right now, I'm getting back in my mm -hmm. focus. But it takes time. Like mm -hmm. some other other larger opportunities in business came about where it's like, huh, I want to hop on this, I want to hop on that. And it took, it deviated the time that I would devote back to that routine. Because when I was devoting, you know, working out like twice a day, riding bike, you know, 15, 25 mile uh, rides and you know, going to the track four times a week where I put in you know mm -hmm. six seven miles and I still I'm telling you Northwestern's track is amazing um, still there every Sunday <laughs> and Tuesday but um, like it, it was I have more time to just even mm -hmm. think things out okay this is a green day this is gonna be my fiber day you know I'll eat some proteins here but figure out when the proteins are you know it's my fast day this my you know mm -hmm. like the the time devoted and then you know as business opportunities started mm -hmm. coming you know and then even connected to some of those business opportunities it's like hey meet us out at this bar meet us at this place and mm -hmm. really no matter what the processed food is just not going to have the <laughs> substantive value of you cooking it yourself right mm -hmm. because you're cooking it yourself mm -hmm. you know um so i definitely feel you on that grind mm -hmm. uh but i've also so in that i got in and now I, I, you know even since COVID 19 mm -hmm. But then I got really into supplements. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just as much, even more so back into supplements. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out more herbs. Mm -hmm. um, and my people over there and everything like that. And definitely what you're doing and everything. But I've learned, you know, different people say, like, oh, I take vitamins and don't do anything. But I've mm -hmm. also learned just with the intake, like it's a science mm -hmm. even to take mm -hmm. which vitamin you take, when you take it. Um, what your dosage is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what you're eating, what your, your fitness regimen is, yeah, yeah your workout, that. like uh -huh. it's like <clears throat> understanding that the potency of a vitamin, which just makes perfect sense mm -hmm. in the logic of it all, but it just doesn't fit in the in the marketing of how we perceive things as mm -hmm. Americans. You know what I'm saying? As Americans, we think it's like the limitless pill. It's like right. I'm just talking to somebody like, right there. Yeah. <laughs> And That's like, so wow, funny. I, I took this pill and it's like, okay, so <laughs> how much water did you drink? Are you drinking your, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, as, yes. um, when I had COVID, uh -huh. and it was almost kind of scary. Uh -huh. um, and uh -huh. I don't think most people know, like I've never mentioned it on the show, but when I had COVID, it was scary because I thought I'd have been more impacted. And mm -hmm. it was around, uh, it was December of 2020 when I had it. I actually had COVID during my birthday. Mm -hmm. So it was weird. You know what I'm saying? You know, and actually the most, the toughest thing about COVID when I had it was my family calling me thinking I'm about to die, possibly. <laughs> you know, they're like, you okay? You alive? And it's like, hey, man, stop calling me with this. <laughs> Don't give me this bad juju. You know? But the actual impact just made me zig like, okay, I need to dig deeper into like my vitamin D intake. I got to dig deeper into what I'm doing as far as like my B vitamins. I need to think a little bit more into like some of these other herbs, like mm -hmm. how many greens am I, you know what I'm saying? Am mm -hmm. I, you know, my gr leafy green, like mm -hmm. a, a lot of stuff my, my grandma Bill always is, and it, it's there and present. But I've also learned even in taking the D, like mm -hmm. adding vitamin K in the mm -hmm. mix, like it's certain vitamins that open up the potency of other vitamins. Mm -hmm. And absorption points too. So, I mean, and it's about being consistent too, you know. Um, so we, I can't take my vitamin today and then be like, and forget to take it then I and take it. Right. And guzzle them down, uh, or seven. <laughs> or say, you know, I took them twice a week and then next week, I'm, oh, this, these ain't doing nothing for me, mm. you know. So, and when you mentioned the limitless pill, me and my friend was talking, and I was like, oh, this ain't doing nothing for me, you know. So, and when you mentioned the limitless pill, me and my friend was talking earlier because he took some um, some lion's mane, mm. um, which is, um, you know, said to assist with your your brain focus, mm -hmm. and. And I asked him, I said, <laughs> I said um, you know, how you feel? He like, 
I feel like it's it's cool, but I don't know. I just feel like I should be smarter. I said, well, shoot, I wish I could take a pill like that. <laughs> Make me smarter. And we started, we, we, he was joking, but we started to talk about the limitless pill. Like, I wish I could take a pill and it had me, like, you know, on 10 and, and smarter and I could do this and that and all that. That's what we was like. It, it, it ain't no magic pill, you know, and a lot of people, you know, even when it comes to weight loss or even getting sick, getting a cold, um, think if I take it today, I'm gonna be better tomorrow. If I take this weight loss pill today, um, I'm gonna lose ten pounds, pounds. You know, <laughs> you know, like. But you know, you yeah. still eating Whopper burgers and you still mm -hmm. eating cheese burgers and you still eating chili cheese fries and you know all this bad yeah, we're stuff. We're seeing this with some of your surgery. <laughs> it's like if you don't change the, you know, right, it's gonna if you go don't change right. the habit and the lifestyle. It's not gonna eventually. It ain't gonna work. Yeah. So so within that, uh, within that arc of that story, uh, how, how do you go about like just your your learning path for your for your clientele? Because mm -hmm. I, I definitely know like, you know, different people, you know, some people may want the information, some don't. How do you inform your buyer mm -hmm. of like, OK, this is what I suggest or, you know, how do you give them some game? Well, uh, it's also about, you know, how I learn my employees. You got to learn your customers, too, because everybody don't want to hear that. Um, you know, I already know. I already know what to do. And you're like, okay. You know, well, I would recommend that this, this, and this, or so I would suggest. Oh, I definitely, if if I see a pack of cigarettes, I'm like, when are you going to stop smoking, you know? I do say that, you know? I don't mind. Um, because we want you to be here, you know? If you got friend, you family and kids and, you know, especially if you're a dad, you know, your kids need like you. I'm doing the vitamins so I can still smoke. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work, buddy, you know? One or the other. Nah, but again, it's about... Um, you know, if they if they ask a question, mm -hmm. I'm always down to you know school them. Um, and sometimes, um, like I said, they don't want to hear that. They they just said, oh, I already know. My my friend told me that this worked, and and I always let them know. You know, everybody's body is different. You know, our okay. chemistry makeup is different. So what may work for your friend, you know, may not work for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know. You said she took this pill and lost 10 pounds, and you said she didn't work out. You know, somebody lying, you know. <laughs> what, um, what is, uh, as we get closer to the end, but I still uh -huh. have so many more questions. Go oh, ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, you cool. I, I was talking so much. Like, <laughs> uh, this one is, is pulling. Like, sometimes it I'm happens sorry. like that. But um, I, what, what are most people um, there? Because your store is, like, right there in that footprint of that mm -hmm. neighborhood. It's... Uh, 2715 Puritan Avenue, uh, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. So that's the zip, uh, 2715 Puritan. That's like mm -hmm. right in the hood. Like things like that, you're right. You mm -hmm. usually just don't exist. We don't mm -hmm. even think stuff like that can be mm -hmm. sustainable in the hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just because it's, 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 it sticks out. So mm -hmm. um, within that, what, what are most people connecting? Uh, what products do most people, mm -hmm. what, what's like some of your top sellers? What right. And my customers are great. You know, that area, they, they definitely look out for me and they keep me, you know, safe and sound and, and grounded. And I, I have a great customer base over there. Um, okay. And they mostly, uh, mostly uh, take sea moss, um, black sea oil are top sellers. Vitamin C and zinc are top sellers, too. And, and um, I've been taking more zinc mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, sea moss. What's mm -hmm. the benefit of sea moss? Well, um, so, <laughs> so it has a lot of different uh, health benefits. Um, overall I COVID, benefits. I got like somebody. My homeboy was like, "I'm gonna get that sea moss." Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, so it that's a, it is a top seller for me. Um, it has over ninety uh, minerals that our our body need for nutrients. How do you? Um, how do you how do you cook it or, or, or what do you, how do you take it? What do you put it in a smoothie? What, what's the best method for sea moss? Well, um, a lot of people just blend it and make it into a gel. Um, so you soak it. So if you buy the raw form, I have powder, peels, 
the gel and then I also have it in raw form. So I guess depending on your schedule, how you want it, if you want it like right now, most people get the gel. Um, you can take a tablespoon of it um, and just a lot of people just take a tablespoon and eat it. Um, you know, if you don't like that consistency of it, because it's a gel, um, a lot of people put it in their smoothie to get the benefits of it. Um, it's really good for your gut. Um, it's really, really good for your immune system. Um, it is said to, you know, help with those things. Um, and powder, the powder form, I would say the top ones that sell would be the, the powder form and the gel. Because um, a lot of people don't be feeling like making the... Making the mm -hmm. Do you... Um, so if that's one of your top sellers, for you, what is your top... What What's what's on your vitamin? Uh, like right, my right go-to? Yeah. What are you, my go-to is a, a regular multivitamin. Okay. Um, so... A regular women's one a day. I take a, I mean, if you saw my purse, you'd be like, why are you taking it? <laughs> I got everything in there. That's my, my cabinet. Um, so I take a multivitamin every day. Um, I've been taking a multivitamin consistently for years. Do you feel um, a difference if you, if you don't take it for a day or two? Like, it's like, wow. We ran mm, out not for a day or two. I don't know. I don't even know if I even went with a day or went two without. Okay, oh yeah. you don't but, even know uh, <laughs> But I, if I did, I don't think I would be greatly impacted because it's in my system. Um, um, I do feel like um, like my energy levels, you know. So if I forget to take it in the morning, I would take it like in the afternoon or whatever. Um, but if I forget to take it in the morning, I do feel like my energy level, it could be like oh, mental, yeah. mm -hmm. it could be mental, you know, you know, it could be the placebo say. effect, you know, I ain't taking my vitamin, I feel a little, you know, but you know, when I take it, I'm like, you know, but uh, it could be mental too. So um, I also take uh, biotin, um, for my hair and my skin and my nails. Um, I also take um, um, a B vitamin for my energy level also. So I stack my vitamins. So okay. I take a multivitamin, then I take a, a vitamin D separately on top of that. I take a vitamin C separately on top of that. I take a zinc uh, <laughs> on top of that, and then I take my biotin. And then I take... Um, I take um, ginseng, a panic ginseng. I don't take that every day though. Okay. Um, just like if I have like something to do, okay, like clean up or something. So do you? <laughs> so do you look at it like? Um, and then what about like the type of supplement? Do you mm -hmm. cycle on and cycle off in different types? Like, do you say like, all right. I'm going to try this zinc supplement or maybe at like this mega, you know what I'm saying? Like at this milligram for now, and then I'll go to this milligram. Like how do you manage? What, what's your suggestion? For so that? what I do is I typically would read what the directions say, okay. um, you know, take it a court, take it a, you know, it's like, you know, people, it's like, hey, give me the <laughs> highest dose of <laughs> I'm gonna slam twenty of these because okay. I'm trying to get rid of this cold before I got this vacation. Uh -huh. and can't go. So, um, but if I what I do, you know, I always suggest people read the directions. Um, but if I feel like um, if I'm going on a trip or something like that, I'll probably double my dosages or something like that. If I'm going out of the country, um, if I'm going even out of the state, I'll like double my dosage of vitamin C, double my dosage of zinc or whatever mm -hmm. I'm taking, my vitamin D. Um, uh, if I'm starting a new, <laughs> if I'm, you put me up front, if I'm starting a new supplement, um, always, you know, go by the suggested dosage. But if, if I'm starting something new, I might double it. Okay. Um, 
get it in my system. A little. I don't even know the science of it all, but that's what I, you know, do. And, and then uh, I guess just the the last question that, like, you know, we hear this from a lot of people. Like, right. I haven't had a cold in 30 years. Uh -huh. How often do you, like, like, are you more in tune? Do you, well, because I know you've been in this mix for so long with your body. Like, do you recognize early on? Absolutely. Because that's one thing I do notice. Like, I had, like, a little slight bug, which mm -hmm. I think was... It's weird as I get older, allergies kick in mm -hmm. sooner now. Mm -hmm. But like I notice faster mm -hmm. if my supplement intake, like I can sort of like it'll be like it's like up, oh, that's something. <laughs> you know, it's weird. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, do you notice like what changes in reference to health? Mm -hmm. You know, awareness or, or, or what arc is, is that right now with you? With so your I haven't really been under the weather under the weather in a you know in a few years okay um okay. so i don't know um if i will attribute it to you know my supplement intake um mm -hmm. it could be my diet mm -hmm. um i would i want to also before we leave is touch on how important sleep is um sure. to you know your your fitness and your your, your nutrition your overall wellness mentally um um emotionally you know we need to get more sleep how, you know how, how, when you say more yeah water i've been doing water uh -huh. like, like yes. i think i'm supposed to but mm -hmm. how much sleep do you think the average person needs uh six to eight hours okay um i would like and you know you back in the day eight, does that mean like i what if i consistently. level at six mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. should i should i throw in an eight every now and again well you know your body more than i do okay. um so if you feel like um throughout your work day if you're getting tired if you're getting frustrated um if you're getting a little bit uneasy mm -hmm. um than you would normally do you probably just tired and need some rest. Um, if you are um, quick to be mad or catch an attitude, you know, sometimes it's, it's just as easy as getting some sleep. I don't want to, you know, minimize it, um, you know, at all because, you know, we are dealing, you know, especially today, people are dealing with a lot of stuff. You know, financially, emotionally, death, whatever it is, um, and we need to deal with that. Um, maybe talk to somebody. But again, sleep is very important to our, you know, our mental capacity. Um, and you might get more done when you have more sleep. Okay. You know. <laughs> all right. And all right. So we're at the last portion. Classic right, Detroit sweet. is different questions. Um, First, your very first car, year making model, what year did you get it? I got a 1992 Ford Tempo, okay. and it was white, and my auntie gave it to me in 1999. Okay. That was my car I drove to Northwood. Where was the first place you went with it? To school. Okay. So you got the first lady. I don't know. I don't you know. I probably went to the gas station, okay. like, look at my car, y'all. Um... You're the DJ. It's the end of the fireworks at Woodward and Jefferson. You get to play three songs. What songs are you playing? What songs am I playing? Ooh wee, uh, ooh wee. Mm 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 mm. What songs am I playing? I'ma play um something by Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Let me see. Let me see what I'ma play by Kendrick Lamar. Uh, backseat freestyle. Okay. Um, I'm gonna play that by Kendrick okay. Lamar. I mean, we get a little. Uh, on there, so. <laughs> there we go. Um, so this most wonderful. I'm gonna play um, "Lost One" by Jay Z. Okay. Um, shoot. And I'm gonna play "Star" by Prince. Okay. <laughs> All right. And very last question: If you could rename what would after one Detroiter, who would it be, and why? After one Detroiter, hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Who has the most impact on me? I don't know. Let me see. I don't know. That's a tough one. I'm not sure. 
maybe a teacher or somebody I had. What's, you what know, teacher? what teacher? I don't know. I had some great teachers, man. The whole, the whole um, Weber and the whole Northwestern people, what teachers I had. If we can combine every letter out of their name or whatever, I, I, it'll be a, a. It might not be you know legible or readable name, but it'll be you know. <laughs> You're saying Northwestern. We talking Mr. Douglas. <laughs> Mr. Oh, man. Mr. Douglas, you know what I'm uh, saying? Doug. Good old Doug. Yeah, I had some great teachers at Northwestern. Oh, yeah. Love Doug. Doug. Be like, Mr. Fraser, <laughs> we, we are not going to not have studies today. <laughs> Everything. you like, Doug. It's like, Doug, this is the first week of school. Why am I having you gotta, a quiz? You got a pop quiz mm-hmm. on the first day. <laughs> and then be like, it's like, what is going That's on? That's hilarious. Hey, we got a quiz, like, John. Like, you oh, got to be prepared, Mr. Fraser, <laughs> for life. Unexpected things. <laughs> Man, that's hilarious. Like half the, half the I class forgot. I forgot right about here, Doug. <laughs> it's me, the other four nerds, and these three people. Uh, well, y'all finna have a quiz. <laughs> that are forced quiz. to be here. That's funny. That's dope. But, yep. So, yep. There know. we go. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Thank you. Peace be. Peace. Detroit is Different is where you get information, artistry, history, music, and even comedy. Detroit is Different, a home for the culture of Detroit. Visit online at DetroitIsDifferent.com today.